Welcome back to Neckbeardia. I guess it's time to get back to Vault 120 and uh, finish up this story. So I guess uh, pitter-patter, let's get at her, eh? Part of the useless engineering group. Disassembled his bed to block off all holes. Sleeps on his sofa. Chill as fuck. Happy on his own. He did all that day one. Way before shit hit the fan and doesn't have a clue of what's going on. Doesn't care, either. A man has sex with a woman. A year passes. He sees her again. She has a child. Still small enough to pass through the hole. He hangs out with the son and wife for ten days. He has a beautiful birthmark. The lover, with a quivering voice, says that he can keep the baby. The man doesn't think he can raise it right. She tries to convince him that he can. He passes the child back to her last minute. The rooms shift. Years pass. He looks into one of the rooms. It's something terrible. It's one of the corpse rooms where people abandon babies. There's a baby on top of the pile. It's his son. Rooms shift. There's somebody sitting in the corner in the room far from you. You can't make him out. He doesn't talk, and he never leaves. He seems short. You never seem to catch him getting up for food. He must do it when you're asleep. The tenth day. The warning should happen soon. The little man gets up. Hey, um, you're a kid. Yeah, so? And you're... You're alone. So what? How... How are you alone? Don't you have a mother or father? Yeah, I have a dad. The warning goes off. I don't see your dad in the room. Where is he? Where the fuck is he? He left, okay? How the fuck could he leave? There's no way out. Answer me, damn it. The room shift. Answer me. Hundreds of years in the future. Everyone in the vault has died. Assuming that no one has found a way out and no one has found a way in. Just skeletons in every room now. Every ten days, there's a shift. Just empty quietness for ten days. Then the grinding of metal to shift rooms. Forever. You enter the vault at the start of the Great War with the love of your life. You're separated into two rooms connected to each other for administration purposes. Suddenly the entrance to the rooms close. You scream and shout trying to open the door. It doesn't budge. You realize you and your lover's rooms are connected by a small hole. You console her saying you'll find a way out. Over the next two days you realize it's hopeless to escape. You spend the rest of the nights holding your lover's hand and talking to each other. On the tenth day, the siren screams and you panic. The rooms seem to be moving. You grab your lover's hand and shout to her, I love you, I love you, don't go. She's crying. Through the tears as her hands are separated, she yells, Anon, I'm pregnant. And then silence as your rooms are separated. Then shit comes in from the new holes simultaneously. Woman with a slender four-year-old son, pregnant again after last shift. She can't possibly manage raising another child in her cell. As her child sleeps, she gently wraps him in a blanket. Three of the cells are occupied, one by a man murmuring in the corner, one by an old lady, and one by a young man who refused to help her raise the child. The last room contained the decaying corpse and decrepit jumpsuit of someone who looked to have lost an arm in a shift and bled out. She slips her oldest child into the corpse room as a siren sounds. He wakes up from falling to the floor, crying and panicking. He untangles the blanket and rushes to the hole, screaming, Mommy, Mommy please. But his mother just sits on the bed in her own cell looking straight ahead. Mommy, please help me. The siren stops. The rooms shift. Vault 120 one shift you end up next to a beautiful woman. Over the ten days you fall in love and fuck before the next shift. 
The last thing she says is that she'll always love you and she'll wait for you. Every shift since then, you check the surrounding cells for her. Years later, you find her. Somehow, she got some guy in her cell with her. They've been living together for years and have several children. She doesn't remember you. In an insane, heartbroken rage, you squeeze through the hole and murder all of them. Hey, I'm Mike. Who are you? Did you hear about the, uh, the shit wars? I've never seen it, but heard that people were shitting in each other's rooms. That's insane. Um, do you speak? Ten days pass. The warning goes off. The silent man shoves his head into the wall. The rooms shift. Man's head comes off. Be a girl. Late generation. The shifting rooms are all that you have known. Your mother taught you everything that you know about the spearmen and rot rooms and the one-armed man and all those stories. Your mother died a long time ago. You're a woman now. You got rid of her body a long time ago, too. You're alone now. One night, you woke up surrounded by men. Mother told you no one could get through the holes besides babies. For ten days and ten nights, they rape you mercilessly. They leave the last night with smiles on their faces. You give birth to one of their children. You seriously contemplate throwing it into the right room. The rooms shift again. You hear a struggle in the other room. Suddenly, the thin men come through your room again. You scream and hide in the corner, but they're not moving. They're dead. You look through the room they came from. A man with a missing arm is standing there, covered in blood. You and him fuck like pigs. Been chatting with a cutie pie for the last week. We're really getting into each other. One day she starts unzipping her jumpsuit, giving me a cute little wink. Oh boy, dot JPEG. We start fucking like rabbits through the hole. Attention dwellers, shift imminent. Oh shit, no. Pull out of the rabbit hole at the last second. We call for each other as the cubes rise up. I was about to come. New neighbor plugs in his hairy ass to say hello. That feeling too horny to care and, finish it, and finishing in his ass. Okay. Guy who has miraculously not been subjected to the shit wars going on between the cells. Still hopeful and friendly. Looking forward to meet four new people so we might exchange some books. Siren ends. Room shift. Four asses simultaneously press against the holes in a cell. Why God? Why? It's night in the vault. Of course you know that there is no such thing. Not here. It's simply the name you throw out when the lights dim just a fraction. You've been with your neighbors for 10 days now. The sounds of them attempting to converse with you have long since stopped, giving way to silence. You peer around, looking at the makeshift barricades you were able to create from spare clothes, empty food cans, and other assorted crap that enters your room. Suddenly, you hear it. The rumble, deep and loud, juddering your small domicile threatening to destroy your last ditch chances to remain sane. As suddenly as it starts, it stops. That's when you hear it. It's not the polite knock against steel, the hasty scratch of nails, nor the muted sounds of speech. It's different. It's louder, more powerful. You scramble to identify where it's coming from, to stop it, to bring back the silence, the oh-so-beautiful silence. You spot one of your barricades, ballooning inwards as something smashes against it. Finally, it gives, scattering contents everywhere, forcing you to cover your face lest you be blinded by the flying debris. You keep your eyes shut, not wanting to spot what it is that's coming to end your pitiful life. A sound breaks you, forcing you to look. Through the hole, sits an ass. Guy in corner, only two neighbors. They become best of friends, a young woman and a man. They become very close. They decide it's better to stay with people you know. They plan out to destroy the mechanisms that make the room shift. 
They nullify the gears that makes their rooms move. The three of them, together forever. The love triangle is formed, but the man in the corner gets the short stick. Day by day, he is subjected to their noise of lovemaking and flirting. They eventually stop talking to corner guy. They mostly speak to their new neighbors since their holes still shift. Out of jealousy and loneliness, beckon the woman to the hole. He kisses her. Out of fear and rejection and crushing loneliness, he grabs her by the neck and forces her to the wall. Other man notices. Yells through the hole. Corner guy threatens to kill woman and beckons the young man to get close. Stab him in the neck. The woman, out of fear, panic bites corner guy. He stabs her while in a panic. He lets go as he hears the last blood gurgles of his two best friends. Only neighbors are dead. Any contact he tries with the other neighbors past his original two best friends are met with the sight of their corpses. Completely alone, he sits in the corner, far away, yearning for human interaction. Unjamming the gears in his room won't work, since his friend's room prevent him from moving. Forever reminded of his crime, he stays in his corner with his two best friends rotting corpses. Memorize the timing for room switches. Choose one of the four people as sacrifice, preferably the one I dislike the most. Start saving up all shit. Save up as much shit as humanly possible. Perhaps use makeshift butt plug. Minutes before the room switch, shove asshole through the sacrifice's hole. Start singing, do you know the muffin man at the top of my lungs and shit at a force rivaling a thousand suns? Repeat. My goal would be the shit so hard that I get it from his hole to the other hole right across from it. Get into your room for the first time. Years go by live through everything. Slowly everyone starts dying one by one. More years pass. Your cell doesn't come into contact with anyone alive for years, just corpses. Finally meet one other person. Seems normal. Tells you he hasn't seen anyone in years. Cells rotate. See no one for seven years. Cells rotate. You see the guy again. He's killed himself. You are all alone. Early years. Haven't seen a woman in a while. Siren goes off. Doors shift. Look around. You see a beautiful woman in one of the rooms. Wait a minute here. Scroll eat. Nope, I'm not reading this shit. God damn it, 4chan. Put large object in front of holes. Larger than the holes themselves. Cover with sheets, towels, blankets. Make a spear out of a mop slash broom and a kitchen knife, assuming they are part of the accommodations. Eventually secure whole blocks. Occasionally remove them to trade music hollow tapes and various other entertainment products. The moment I see an ass, it's getting stabbed. Likewise with skinnies. Die happy. I'd rather live a life of near isolation than one of no privacy and constant shitting. Be surrounded by skinnies. You have to sleep some time anon. Stay awake for nine days. Sirens go. So relieved you go to sleep. As you close your eyes, you see one of them move just before the rooms shift. Day 81. My room is now in a corner. The sudden peace is very different from what I've been used to so far. The left hole, the woman inside looks like she died a while ago. Poor thing. The right one, well, the fucker has been doing non-stop sock puppet show by the hole for nearly a week now. Thinking of killing myself if he doesn't stop it before the next shift. Oh well, at least it isn't another ass. TLDR Vault 120. Vault 120. 1,000 people. 1,000 cells. Head size hole in each four walls. Every 10 days, the cells shift to new locations. One guy steals and eats a baby. Mother tells people about the guy. People shit in his cell. People spread lies about who he is. People start shitting in everyone's cell. One guy loses his hand from fisting a shitter. 
Shitter shits out his hand in someone else's cell. Shit fisting becomes a tradition of shitting out that hand. The man who loses his hand wraps glass to a stump, proceeds to stab all asses that shit in his cell, become the hero Vault 120 needs but not the one it deserves. People break their bones so they can fit through the holes. They become skinnies. They kill, rape, and convert others to become skinnies. One lady teases men with sex, only to trap their dicks. She then tortures the guy's dick until it's cut off by the shift. The priest speaks to those who have lost their way and inspires them. Spearman teaches people to make spears to defend themselves. Some people cover the holes and live a life of solitude. Corpse rooms are cells where dead bodies, mostly unwanted children, are put. Stories of things that go on in Vault 120 are told. Vault 120 will never be as good reading it unless you were there for its creation. And that's the end of the story of Vault 120. I get kind of annoyed when uh, this is a good idea, right? It's got a good, it's a good twist in the vault. And you got guys who just want to make it too edgy. There's no need for all the edge. There's no need for like that weird bimbo story where I, I'm sure you all read it. I'm sure, I'm sure he's going to put it up for you guys to read. But like, it's a bimbo he has sex with and cuts her head off. That's, 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 that's fucking stupid. That would like, I don't get why he, they believe that even be a thing that would happen. I know it's just a shit post probably. But just annoys me, and I don't want to bother reading that shit. You know, like, the skinnies were a great part of the story. The fucking shit fister, I mean, it's a, it's stupid, it's a shit post, but still, like, funny, in a way. This could have been a lot better if there was less edge to it. You know, less of that 4chan edge. And it's just, like, a very blunt edge, because they just fucking whack that shit right into place. Like, there's somehow, like, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. But, uh... I don't know. There's been a lot of vaults made over the years. I've made a I've made a vault or two, and they're always fun to think about because you get all these people trapped like rats in a huge simulated underground society, and they can go any way you want them to. They're just like these cool moldable stories where you can kind of push the limits of societal bounds and see just how far you can compress that nugget till it turns into a diamond. I think my favorite vault is, uh, I think it's the Boomers. <laughs> I think the Boomers make me laugh the most because of how in New Vegas they you help them, uh, raise up that fucking, the, the uh, Super Fortress and have it fly around. Always cracked me up. But yeah, if you like this video and others like it, be sure to like and subscribe to Neckbeardia and click the bell icon so you know the videos are released through the week. This has been Guard Bro, and I'll see you in whatever the hell else Neckbeardia gives me. <laughs>